Hi guys, in this video we write a function to compute the Fibonacci sequence. We already done this in R, so in this video we are going to do exactly the same in Python. So, uh, the Fibonacci sequence is the series of numbers 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, and so on, where the next number is found by adding up the two numbers before it. For example, 2 is equal to 1 plus 1, 3 is equal to 2 plus 1, 5 is equal to 3 plus 2, and so on. Starting values are 0 and 1. No negative input allowed. On the left, you see the table of contents of this video. We start with dynamic programming, the naive approach. Then we move to dynamic programming with memoization. Next is dynamic uh, bottom-up dynamic programming. And finally, we deal with the Fibonacci sequence as a second order difference equation. So this is the, the content. Let's start. We need to import numpy and lru underscore cache from functools. Now, let's write the first function. Fibonacci takes one argument n, the n term of the Fibonacci uh, sequence. If n is less than zero, we raise a value error, negative input not allowed. Else, if n is less or equal to 1, we return n. For example, if n is 0, the value return is 0. If n equals 1, the value return is 1. Else, so if n is greater than 1, the function calls itself back. So here, let's suppose that n equals 2. So in this case, we are in the else. The function is going to call Fibonacci n minus 1, so 2 minus 1, 1, plus Fibonacci n minus 2, 2 minus 2, 0. So Fibonacci 2 is going to call Fibonacci 1 plus Fibonacci 0. Okay? And this is the recursive part of the function. Let's run. Let's test it. With a negative value, we have here the value error, negative input, not allowed. Here, we have just find uh, all the values in the sequence. Let's try with a large number. And as you can see, it takes a little bit of time. Why is that? Let's go back to the function. Let's suppose that n equals 5. So we are here in the else condition. The function calls itself back. What does that mean? That it's calling Fibonacci n minus 1. So 5 minus 1, 4, plus Fibonacci n 5 minus 2, 3. So Fibonacci 5 is calling Fibonacci 4 plus Fibonacci 3. But here, Fibonacci 4 is calling Fibonacci 3 plus Fibonacci 2. Why? Because 4, 4 minus 1, 3, plus 4 minus 2, 2. But what's the point is that Fibonacci 3 was already called by Fibonacci 5, because we said Fibonacci 5 was... Fibonacci 4 plus Fibonacci 3. And now Fibonacci 4 is calling Fibonacci 3 plus Fibonacci 2. So as you can see, we are, the function is computing values that actually has already computed. And that is that is making the function very slow. And we are dealing with this issue with memoization. This is a first approach. We initialize this object cache that will store the result of the computation. 
So uh, if n is less than zero, we raise the value error. If n is less or equal to one, we return the value n. Else, if n in cache, return the value of cache at the index n. Why is that? Because here in, we are generating the result of Fibonacci. We call this function Fibonacci underscore uh, memo, where n minus one plus Fibonacci underscore memo n minus two, the recursive. But this time the value is stored in res, and we pass this res to cache at the index n. Okay. So here we are checking that if this n is in cache, if if it's in cache, it means that we already computed. So we are returning this value here. Okay. And that will make the function faster. Let's run. And as you can see, much faster. But in Python, actually, we can do better in terms of coding by using a decorator. So now we, are, we use the uh, lru underscore cache that we imported before. This function is basically the same function that we wrote at the real beginning. I just changed the name underscore memo, but this is the same function. But now the value that is computed will be stored and reused. And as you can see, again, very fast. Anyway, we don't really need recursion for the Fibonacci sequence. We can just use a for loop. So let's do that. Again, if n is less than zero, we raise the value error. But now, here, we initialize this object. And then for i in this sequence, in range n plus one, if i is less or equal to one, we append the value i to the fib object. Else, we append the sum of the previous two values in the FIB object. So be careful here. We are not calling back the function. So the function is, is not calling back anything. Here, it's just is we are taking the value stored here in the previous two. Okay? And this is what is returned. And as you can see again, also in this case is very fast. Not that here, if we just comment out this part, we obtain all the number, all the values in the Fibonacci sequence up to the n term. Okay, but let's restore it. Okay. So uh, if you're interested in this topic and you want to learn more about dynamic programming with the Fibonacci example, I really recommend that you watch Introduction to Algorithms, Lecture 19, Dynamic Programming 1, Fibonacci, Shortest Path, by Professor Eric Timain from MIT. I leave the link in the description. Last part of this Fibonacci example is just to deal with Fibonacci as a second order difference equation. So I'm not going uh, in the math, but basically what we do in the code here is just write the particular solution of this second order difference equation. For this task, we use NumPy because as you will see in a moment, we are going to vectorize this function. Actually, NumPy will vectorize this function. Here, R int round elements of the array to the nearest integer and I return the value as integer, okay? And again, it's very fast. Now, we can go, actually, actually, last example here, if we generate here the sequence from zero to eight, we can pass this sequence, this vector to the function and we have uh, the, the values of the Fibonacci sequence. Okay, last part of the video. Let's compare the speed. Okay. 
Okay, and this lowest is the the first one that we wrote. Okay, guys, the, that's all for today. I hope the video is useful, and see you in the next video.